Hi, so you're considering the purchase of a BMW K75 or a K100 model. Well, the one thing you absolutely want to check before you make that purchase is the splines on the rear drive. Now, if this, if the, this only applies to bikes with a monolever rear suspension, like this one. If it's a paralever, you'll have another torque bar down here and a long part of the rear drive here. Those don't apply to this. This is strictly for monolever bikes. These monolevers will eat these splines if they're not maintained properly. Every time the rear tire is removed or replaced, you're supposed to clean each tooth of every spline and re-lubricate them with the proper lubricant. Stabarag's Honda Molly works fine for back here. Um, a, te a Teflon Molly base is okay here, not for the clutch splines, but anyway. Uh, so what we want to do, we're going to remove this today, and it generally takes an hour at most if you're doing it at, at you know the seller's house or something. Obviously, make sure they're okay with that. If they're really leery and they really don't don't want you to take it apart, then there's a good chance they know the splines are already fucked. So. We're going to take this apart and inspect these, and hopefully this, this can save you a lot of money. So pay attention, and hopefully this makes your life a little bit easier. First thing you, the first thing you want to do is remove the saddlebags. Um, your next step is going to be unbolting the caliper, which Sean is going to do now. You need an 8 millimeter Allen wrench. There are two bolts. You see this bolt here? Don't touch those. Those hold the two caliper halves together. You want the mounting bolts, not the bolts that bolt the caliper together. So we remove this bolt, we remove that bolt. Now the caliper is loose, it can be lifted up and down. Our next step is going to be the center cap on the rear wheel. Sean has already removed. This style, you can pull it on and off with a finger, but there is a slot here for a screwdriver. All you need to do is get a finger in there. Have your girlfriend do it if she's got nice long nails. She'll love you when she breaks one. Kidding. 17 millimeter deep socket with a breaker bar or use the tool kit if it's in the tail section. Put the bike in first gear. And you're gonna remove those four bolts. When you reinstall these, they get torqued to 78 pound-feet slash 105 newton meters, to be precise. You can, despite what some tell you, you most certainly can use copper anti-seize on them. Once we get this last bolt out, lift the wheel off the hub, move it over to the side. We can leave it right there. It's really not in our way. Now we can lift the caliper off. You'll see down here there's a little rubber grommet. That fits in that indentation in the swing arm. So let's get the caliper the fuck out of the way. This is our speed sensor. This is what tells the speedometer how fast you are going. And then we have a whole different comical story about how inaccurate BMW speedometers slash odometers are. But anyway, we're going to leave that there. This is a little three millimeter or four millimeter bolt. Uh, these do tend to seize because people don't put copper anti seize on them. Fucktards. So, I suggest leaving that the fuck alone unless you know that it's good. But again, we're looking at a bike that you're potentially going to buy, and it's not yours yet. So leave that the fuck alone. Follow this wire along. Unclip it. Follow it up through here. We've already removed the side panel, which just presses on. And we have disconnected it. It's 
one of these connectors here, which I've already disconnected it, so it's free, it's loose. This bike's missing the battery hold down. That's nice. Uh, where's the fucking wire? There we go. And that's it. This is free. Next step, shock bolt. This bike has saddlebag brackets on it. These can impede the removal of the shock from the rear drive. Sometimes you'll need to remove these two bolts, the bolt that's up here. You'll have to take this tail section off, the fender off, inside, inside the storage box. You'll have a cover like this. The later ones are a little bit different. This bike is an 85. Anyway, these lift off. Inside, under the back, you'll have, you need a 10 millimeter wrench normally. Someone would put wing nuts on this one so you can loosen those. You come back here, you have two Phillips screws. One here, one there. Sometimes you need to remove the license plate if it sticks out too far, which this one does. You would take these two screws out you would slide this whole mud flap assembly off. That will give you access to this screw, final bolt. And then you can remove, as I said, we've already done those, those, that. This would come off and allow the shock to swing out. But you don't always have to do that. And I'm gonna show you the shortcut here so that you don't have to mess with these. The reason we don't wanna mess with these, sometimes these bolts get seized. Again, because nobody uses fucking copper anti-seize. And you don't want to be breaking a bolt on a bike that you end up, you think you're going to buy, but you're checking and, you know, you get it all apart and the rear drive splines are shit. Maybe the seller doesn't know their shit. You strip a couple of bolts, you break them off, whatever, and then you show them that his rear drive is junk. The guy's probably going to be pretty pissed off. So we try to minimize this as much as possible. Minimize the potential for damage. Sometimes be a little bit of a bear and we'll be back in a minute because these bolts are very 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 long they take a long time to unscrew so we have our four bolts out they've all been removed as you can see they are very long as you can also see they are rusty there's no fucking anti-seize on them wonderful so we are now going to use our rubber mallet and we're going to tap on this and let me, let me point out, the reason we are taking this particular rear drive off is because this bike recently supposedly had a spline lube at Max BMW. I have my doubts because you can see the shit built up here at the seam for the bell housing. It does not look to me like this transmission has been out anytime soon or recently. So... The first thing we, you know, before I go diving in to do a spline loop, the first thing we're going to do is remove the rear drive to check the drive shaft splines and see if those are packed with grease as they should be. If they have been, we can... <laughs> uh, yeah, that answers my question. Let me grab a flashlight. That has not been done. You've got to be fucking shitting me. You lying bastards. This has not had any sort of a spline lube any time in the last, oh, I would say 30 to 40,000 miles. So, now we get to inspecting our splines. Are these splines good or are they worn? These are actually okay. You can expect to see a little bit of a hook to these splines. They do wear, but these are not worn out. And I'll show you what they look like when they're cleaned up, but we're, we're looking okay as far as the condition of them. Uh, the 85s generally didn't chew splines up as bad as the 86 through 95s did. Um, 
they changed the number of teeth in 86. They went to a finer spline. But anyway, in this case, yeah, they, these, these are dry. These just have not been done. These have not been done. It's pretty discouraging. I don't know how much the customer paid for the spline lube on this at uh, Max BMW, but I'm not impressed because it wasn't done. So we have the rear drive, we have soft jaws here holding the brake disc. Now we can rotate and look at the condition of the splines. Sean's going to grab a pick. We're going to clean these splines thoroughly so that you can get an accurate analysis of what the condition of the splines are. Um, we're going to do the same with this. We'll drag a pick in and out and get that all cleaned out. Relubricate it and reassemble it. When you reassemble this, these bolts get torqued to 45 Newton meters. I already gave it a torque for the rear wheel, 105 Newton meters, 78 pound feet. If your torque wrench is only in pound feet, you don't want to convert it. Um, calipers are torqued to 25 Newton meters, the two caliper bolts that we removed. And that's it. Don't forget to plug in the, uh, the rear drive speedometer pickup. Your shock nut gets torqued to 40 Newton meters. And that will get get the bike back together. Now, if your splines have worn out really bad, start negotiating because you're looking at several hundred dollars to rebuild the drive shaft and the pinion spline on the rear drive. So you can plan on spending a thousand dollars anyway to fix that. Um, that may be a deal breaker for some people, for some sellers. You know, they may not be may not be asking that much for the bike in the first place. So that's what you have to work with. I hope this is of some help and helps you to buy a K-bike that's in better condition or at least not get one that needs a lot of work. Thanks. You didn't think I was going to leave you without seeing what the splines look like clean, did you? Fuck no. Here we go. Uh, we have cleaned these. What you're looking at and it can be deceiving. You're looking at uniform edges. If it's got a little bit of a step in it, don't be freaked out. That's pretty much normal. But it is a sign of wear. These are in considerably good shape. I'll get a picture for you. Hopefully those two pictures helped you out to get an idea of what these are supposed to look like. We've also cleaned the rear drive, the pinion splines. These are part of the pinion gear. These are also in considerably good shape. Again, here's a couple of pictures. On that last picture, you might have noticed that this has a little step right here. You would be correct if you are thinking, well, fuck, that's starting to wear out. That is what they do. You have a little step on each tooth. As I said, this, this isn't worn out, but it's got some wear. Uh, this bike has, fuck's on this one, 70,000 miles, 72,000 miles. This is really good. I would imagine these are original. That's rare for an 86 or up. This bike is an 85. So if you're looking at an 86 or newer, which you most likely are, um, you really got to inspect these because they rarely, with no maintenance, they rarely made it to 70,000 miles without a failure. And if it was repaired 
by a BMW dealer, they most likely either installed new parts or they sent it out to another dealer that actually has a machine shop and has a clue of what the fuck they're doing. There's a couple of those out there. Not on the East Coast. Not in the Northeast. I'm sorry. We packed that up. Not in New England anyway. Um, but anyway, when Bruno redoes these, he actually makes a longer pinion spline. And then the drive shaft end, he welds a washer inside to keep the grease inside the shaft. These shafts are hollow. So the grease walks up each time the suspension compresses. You're on and off the throttle. The grease walks up the tube, off the splines, and you end up with dry splines. That's why it's important every time you do a rear tire, re-lubricate. Um, but anyway, so most likely, if it, if it was, you're looking at a bike, even if it was repaired, it probably is not repaired by Bruno. Um, if you take this apart and it's got a longer shaft, you're in really good shape because Bruno's done it. So that's it. I hope this helps you to, uh, as I said earlier, get into a better K bike or one that doesn't need more maintenance than you expected. And uh, well, there might be some unhappy sellers out there. I'd rather have happy buyers than happy sellers. So good luck.